Utah lost that game to USC. They have very quietly rebuilt their position as a powerful team on both sides. And defensively, they're special. And Daniels can't get out, and I wasn't letting him go. He's so explosive, he's so athletic, and he's so determined. Bradley and I, second sack tonight. The best player in the field tonight has been number six for Utah. Offensive line just gets blown up there, and Benjamin pays the price. Every snap tonight, they found their way in the backfield for the most part. Nasty defense. That defense came to play and uh, won the game for us, essentially. We had four turnovers, but it uh, didn't matter. That defense was lights out. I feel like over the years, I've heard Kyle Whittingham be able to boast some big-time performances from his defense. This season, no different. As you take a closer look at their Pac-12 ranks and their FBS ranks and some of the major statistical categories, heard Bradley Nye's name thrown out there. Three sacks in that win against ASU. Not surprising he was your defensive player of the week in the Pac-12 conferences. ASU really struggled season low in points with just three and 136 total yards. For more on not only what happened this past weekend, but what we can expect moving forward, Tom Hackett, he was part of the Pac-12 All-Century team, the man, the myth, the legend. Tom, it is always great to talk with you. I appreciate the, the attire today going with the mock turtle neck. Can't go wrong on that front, but I just gave some of those defensive numbers out there. Explain to me when you watch this team on the sidelines working on that radio broadcast, what jumps out at you on what Yogi has called an elite defense, not just in this conference, but in the country? Mike, Yogi, thanks for having me, first of all. This, this defense is elite. It's it's really good in all phases of, of defensive football. When you look at the numbers, they're one or two in the conference, really in every statistical category that you look. And there are very few weak spots on the defense. I think the defensive line is well publicized. They're, they're probably the best in the conference. They're arguably a top three defensive line in all of college football. You've got a lockdown cornerback in Jalen Johnson, who I think could be one of the first cornerbacks taken in next year's NFL draft. Uh, your safety core, which is headlined by Julian Blackman, made the transition from cornerback to safety, and he seemed to just take it with stride. And then the linebacker is headlined by Francis Bernard, who's been spectacular. So um, I just don't know if I'm, a, if I'm an opposing offensive coordinator, and by no means am I an offensive expert when it comes to football. I, just, I don't know where I would attack. I think the first, first order of business is getting the ball out of any opposing quarterback's hands fast, because if you take too long, guys, that defensive line will swallow you. Tom, we've seen big-time teams in this conference play, and sometimes after they win, they exhale. Thank God we got that done. Let's move on to the next one. Curious, for someone who's around the program, does this team exhale after a win, or are they mission-minded saying, no, let, let's just keep this thing rolling? They're, they're, they're mission-minded, and, um, and it's really impressive to watch them go about their business on game day, but it's it's even cooler to see them throughout the week and you come into these doors, into the facility, watch them spend time with one another. And, you know, I've been thinking the last couple of days about the season so far, Utah and the success they've had, obviously one loss at USC. And there's still a chance Utah might not win the South because of the head-to-head -head, uh, loss they have with, with SC. But, but if they're able to win, I, I would look back on this season and probably look at that loss and say that that was the best thing that could have ever happened to Utah, as remarkable as that may sound, because since then, they've just come out and, and they've looked like a really, really special group that's destined for big things, and I'm fascinated to see when the College Football Playoff Committee comes out with their official rankings. So i, I got to believe that this Utah team's a top-10 powerhouse uh, nationally, and uh, the best team in the Pac-12 from what I can see. Now, I haven't been able to see Oregon football up close and personal, um, but, but I'd love to kind of, I'd love to see that as the Pac-12 championship game, University of Utah taking on the Ducks. This, this team's special. I, I've tried my very best to explain to people why I think that. It is so difficult. I, I've been a part of football teams in the past, and I've also watched and covered them from a media standpoint. This, this football team's different. You just get the sense it's different being on the sideline, the way they talk with one another, the way they seem to be focused. And I think there's also a lot of confidence going around Utah right now, Jen. It, Tom, is the offense, and, and by the way, those college football playoff rankings looming right around the corner in about two weeks. We'll find out what the committee thinks about this Utah squad. But from an offensive standpoint, is Utah's offense underrated? 
Um, I don't think so. I think it's well balanced is, is what I would go with. Um, they run the football really well. They average five yards a carry. Uh, and sure, sure, from a passing standpoint, they're not, they're not ranked. Um, I think they're 10th in the Pac-12 right now when it comes to passing yards per game. But they're number one when it comes to passing efficiency. They, uh, Tyler Huntley and, and whoever's at the helm of, of quarterback has averaged 10 yards a pass. So, um, I, I think it's well balanced, and I think opposing teams respect the offense and what they've been able, it's been able to do this season. To call them underrated, I don't know. I, you, you, you're probably going to have to ask uh, defensive coordinators around the league. I, I think if you would have asked Washington State whether or not that 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 offense is underrated, they probably would have told you no. They they put an absolute whacking on the Cougars. In fact, the next week, and I'm not joking about this, I promise. But the defensive coordinator decided it was all. Uh, it, it was all done for him after the whacking Utah put on him. So uh, hopefully that doesn't happen to the defensive coordinators moving forward. I like people with jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we agree with you there. Uh, Tyler Huntley, what can you tell us about him? And should we expect to see him play against one of the best defenses in the Pac-12 in terms of the Cal Bears this weekend? Tyler's a competitor. He's a leader. Carl Whittingham, it took him a while, but Coach admitted that Tyler Huntley is the number one leader from a player's standpoint on this football team. And What he's been able to do this season has been fun to watch, to be honest with you. He, he struggled over the years, right, with injuries, being able to play throughout the season. And I'm sure he's dealing with some bumps and bruises as we speak. But his decision-making, to me, has been the most the most impressive aspect of his game is he's not making many mistakes at all. He looks calm and comfortable in the pocket, and when things close down on him quickly, he's able to escape and get out of those situations really, really well. So he's, um, he's fun to watch, and, and it's clear Andy Ludwig, the new offensive coordinator, and him have gelled. Um, he's got leadership now. He's changing plays at the line of scrimmage. That's something we haven't seen at the University of Utah for a while, the quarterback being able and trusted to make those decisions in the heat of, in the, heat of the moment. So um, just as much credit goes to Andy Ludwig, in my opinion, as it does Kyla Huntley, because those two have just been like two peas in a pod. Uh, very, very happy with one another. Yeah, Yogi, you've actually been the guy that's been talking about Tyler Huntley deserving to be in that Heisman conversation with, based off of some of the numbers, and he's one of the toughest quarterbacks that we've seen. Tom, I know you made reference to the bumps and the bruises. T tough guy to head back into that game against ASU in a win, and right now uh, his official status questionable, although if he asked Tyler, and some people did, he said he's going to give it a go uh, in this next game. But Tom, always great to talk with you, my friend. Hopefully we'll see you very soon. You guys are the best. Thank you, guys. I, uh, I appreciate everything you're doing. And next time you're in Salt Lake City, let me know. We'll go out. I love that. Mm -hmm. you, I, I, dinner on you, Tom, or Yogi, one or the other. <laughs> so, take care, my friend. See you guys.